and uh, I want to talk today about building a deck to attack a metagame. Uh, I think that in sorcery currently, a lot of people regard Avatar of Earth midrange as the most popular deck, um, or the best deck. And um, for the season three of the Sorcery League, uh, I perceive that there'd be a lot of copies of it in the top cut. So I want to build a deck that was specifically very good against that deck. Um, and then, you know, in general, also choose cards that were strong against, you know, kind of like aggressive burnish decks, um, and also have a like reasonable game plan against uh, Death Speaker, um, since those seem like the things that people were into. So um, to start with, I thought a lot about um, my experiences, you know, playing aggressive decks like Battle Mage, and I noticed that uh, one card that seemed to consistently be frustrating to play against was Gnome Hollows because the Battle Mage couldn't get into it. I would need to go around it. Um, also, I noticed that uh, Free City uh, wasn't quite as annoying, but was still pretty annoying and could slow down a game by like many, many turns. Um, and then, uh, you know, thinking more about how Death Speaker decks win, often they want to get a, a Jin uh, and summon it, it in the same space as your avatar, and then just drop a bunch of cards to deal three damage each. Um, and Avatar of Earth's endgame plan is to be in the same space as your avatar and put a root spider underneath so that your minions can't block and then just beat your avatar up. Um, so Gnome Hollows felt like a piece that could be very resistant to both of those game plans. Um, and then Free City felt like it would be good against generally aggressive decks. Um, so I had this idea that maybe building a deck with sites um, that were very strong against decks and then choosing spells that were synergistic with that would be like a good starting place. Um, so additionally, I put in uh, Bottomless Pit. It's a little bit of a vulnerability against decks that um, have flying creatures, but, um, or airborne creatures. Uh, but it, it could also really frustrate some aggressive decks. Um, but then I want to talk about um, some other sites that I think are really powerful and a little bit underplayed generally. Uh, Crossroads, getting to look at four sites and then put one of your choice back on top uh, is a great way to find other sites. And so the more important other sites are to your strategy, the better Crossroads is. I find that I'm putting Crossroads even in like two element aggressive decks just because Crossroads is good at finding the dual sites or it, it finds you the element that you want. Um, so I think uh, Crossroads is very good. Uh, but uh, maybe I should talk about the, the secret sauce, uh, Primordial Spring. Um, I was shocked when I saw this card when I was opening packs. It's if you control fewer sites than any opponent, draw three sites. Uh, card draw and sorcery is quite rare. Um, and so to get to draw three things um, is just a ton. And you have to be kind of behind your opponent on tempo, which is a very dangerous position to be in. So you need a deck that um, is somehow mitigating being behind like that. Uh, in this case, part of my plan is to be playing sites that make the game frustrating for the opponent to get aggression going um, so that it's not so bad to be playing a site behind. And um, with Primordial Spring, it's uh, often better to go second uh, because if you draw the spring, um, you just need to skip one sight drop to be behind them. Whereas if you're on the play, you have to skip two sight drops. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, Primordial Spring it invites very different play patterns than people are used to, but if your deck supports it, a uh, very powerful draw engine. Uh, and then, um, you know, Mirror Realm can either duplicate Crossroads if you're trying to dig for Primordial Spring or Gnome Hollows, or it can copy a Primordial Spring once you have them active, um, or it can be um, a way to uh, catch up uh, once you're behind on sites, but you've drawn a bunch of them with Primordial Spring as Imperial Road. You can often time this where your opponent doesn't have extra sites in hand, so uh, when it triggers, you get to play an extra site, but they don't. Uh, you can sometimes, because Primordial Spring can draw so many sites, especially if you play two of them, you can sometimes get you know two Imperial Roads or two Imperial Roads and even um, Mirror Realm so that you get to play four sites on a turn. Um, it's uh, it, it can make it so that the backwards tempo of Primordial Spring can pivot into forward tempo um, after you've kind of gotten your clutch of cards. Um, I also find myself playing Imperial Road in lots of decks just because um, if you can time it right, it's effectively like an extra action of your avatar tapping. Um, so in some ways, Imperial Road is kind of like, you know, Draw an extra card. Um, whether it's a spell or site, I guess it just depends on whether or not you're a sorcerer. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so those are kind of the key sites. Um, and then uh, Pillar of Zeros, kind of hateful for Death Speaker, and can be a lot of life. It happens later in the game. And Holy Ground, uh, just to kind of round out the uh, I'm going to make my sites as high value uh, against aggressive decks as possible. So, you know, just an extra, a little bit of extra life buys a little bit more time to set up. Um, okay, so what are these sites setting up? Uh, you know, once again, I was thinking about, well, how are opponents trying to end the game? Um, and can I make it so that I'm at death's door and they can't win? So, um, you know, I thought a lot about, okay, uh, if someone is trying to hit my avatar, the Gnome Hollows is going to make it so that their, their creatures have to be small to get in and get to my avatar. So if I have Shield Maidens, which make it so that nearby allies take one less damage, and I have two Shield Maidens in play, and I'm in a Gnome, gnome Hollows, that means the only creatures that can get into the Gnome Hollows are going to have two or less power, and if there's two Shield Maidens, uh, that's going to mean that they're going to deal zero. So that's kind of the end state that I'm trying to engineer is, you know, when I'm at Death's Door, have two Shield Maidens. Um, but there are other ways of getting damage besides creatures. Right? Playing Lightning Bolt is very common. And, um, you know, there are quite a few decks that will play bigger burn effects like Crater Eyes or Comet Storm or Major Explosion. So uh, Tragedy Worry Ward uh, gives me protection against those kinds of burn spells. Also, if, you know, my opponent is trying to remove the Shield Maidens with a damage-based spell, the Tragedy Worry Ward can protect the Shield Maidens. Um, and then... If I'm trying to make sure my Shield Maidens and Tragedy Worry War don't die, uh, the other major form of removal is berry effects, so like Earthquake or berry. And Old Salt Anchorman is um, kind of a techie card. I'm not sure everyone understands that nearby allies can't be moved by enemy spells and abilities. Forced burrowing, burying, and forced submerging are modes of forced movement. So Old Salt Anchorman blocks those. Um, also, Chaos Twister um, has forced movement, and Old Salt Anchorman will stop the forced movement, and Chaos Twister likewise deals damage, uh, and it's magic, so Tragedy Warrior War will stop the damage from Chaos Twister. So these, this cluster of cards together um, kind of creates a fortress uh, for your avatar and also while you're building it they start protecting each other so that they can't be removed 
Um, and often this leads to a state where you know, the opponent really can't make any progress. There are, there are a few cards that work against these. Infiltrate, uh, Death Dealer, um, you know, and some other less played cards currently. But the idea was these are very effective against the removal that was popular in the Season 3 metagame. Um, with the idea that hopefully the decks that people registered you know, just wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Um, so then uh, to really uh, make sure that I got these cards together, you know, this deck is basically a combo deck that's trying to build a fortress to protect the avatar. Um, also playing Common Sense, uh, you know, initially I can use that to find Old Salt Anchorman, and oftentimes I found I wanted to have two Old Salt Anchormans in case someone Ill infiltrated one of them or something like that. Um, but like after finding enough old salt anchormen, uh, I would tend to get copies of Blink. Um, I always play max copies of Blink if I can cast it. The ability to move your avatar without tapping them so that your avatar can either keep playing sights or drawing spells, to me feels absolutely almost mandatory. Uh, plus Blink combos perfectly with what is possibly, you know, the best card in sorcery, which is Pudge Butcher, um, right? Pudge Butcher's limitation is that I can't move, Blink giving it mobility, uh, really takes away that disadvantage, and Pudge Butcher is just an incredible piece of board control. And especially in the world where Old Salt Anchorman protects our Pudge Butcher from other Pudge Butchers, and Shield Maidens can make it so that Pudge Butcher can drag over other five power creatures, which is, five power is kind of the critical point that makes a creature really playable um, right now. And so, you know, the Pudge Butcher being able to win against other Pudge Butchers or Gation Phalanxes um, is just really nice. So uh, let's blink. Uh, Call of War is another tutor that's, I think, a little less known than Common Sense, but you can search for any exceptional mortal. Uh, so both uh, Shield Maidens and Tragedy Worry Wart are exceptional mortals. So, you know, often if I don't have a Worry Wart yet, I'll use Call of War to get Worry Wart. And after I have a Worry Wart, I'll just use Call of War to get as many copies of Shield Maidens as I can. Um, and getting all of them, like all three of them, shuts down uh, a huge number of things completely. So uh, that's called a war. Um, I'll talk more about creatures. Uh, Root Spider is also, um, I think, just one of the most powerful things in the current metagame. Uh, most players aren't playing water or they're just playing a few water sites because they want locations that can't be targeted by berry or earthquake so that they can hold artifacts there. Um, so Root Spider, you know, both can fight other Root Spiders, uh, but also like shuts down sites in terms of locations that can take damage. And when combined with places like Free City, uh, or Bottomless Pit, or Dome of Osiris, can make it so that in the early game you're, you don't have any exposed sites to take damage at, and you know, can kind of let you get to your long game of setting up your fortress without as much exposure. Um, and Root Spider is so powerful that um, one of the cards that I'm playing in this Hollow Ground deck is Geyser, um, and its main purpose is for other decks that are playing Root Spiders to have a spell that removes Root Spider. Uh, I found that you know the vast majority of games, whether I won or lost, really revolved around whether you know they were able to get a Root Spider to shut off my minions that were protecting me, um, or you know I was able to protect myself with a Root Spider from their minions. And um, Geyser was great. I'm not playing the full set of copies of Geyser because they do just sit in your hands sometimes if they don't have root spiders. 
And though you can just spend two mana to draw a card, um, you know, it, like if you're just spending two mana to cycle them, that's not that great. Uh, so I found two copies is kind of like a happy medium. Uh, Royal Bodyguard is, um, you know, there are a few cards that help your life total and uh, Royal Bodyguard is special in that most of them are healing effects that you have to play before you hit Death's Door. Royal Bodyguard you can play after you hit Death's Door and um, you know, since this deck is kind of all built around if I get to Death's Door, I just want to make a situation where I can't die. Uh, Royal Bodyguard is completely unplanned. Um, even if I don't get enough shield maidens to be completely immune to damage, putting a Royal Bodyguard near a couple shield maidens, or even just one, uh, can make it so that your opponent has to come up with a lot of damage uh, before... Um, you know, your avatar is in trouble. Um, and so I usually save these until I'm at death's door. Um, you know, situationally playing them before that happens can be better, but um, since they're almost like a kind of complete plan on their own, sometimes I, I like to save them in case someone wipes out my, my first set of minions. Um, it's kind of just a thing you have to learn playing matches. Punch Butcher I talked about. Um, Queen of Midland is one of the most powerful draw engines in sorcery, and since I'm not playing a sorcerer, I'm playing an elementalist, um, if games go very long, uh, sometimes I can start running out of resources. If I draw her early, it's kind of awkward because I have, you know, a, a ton of cards in hand, often because of the Primordial Springs, and um, when I cast a tutor like Common Sense or Call to War, it puts another card in my hand. But often enough, you know, I get to the point where I play Queen of Midland and get a bunch of extra resources. And where in other decks she might die frequently, the, the same things that would, would protect her avatar, protect Queen of Midland, uh, Royal Bodyguard can also protect her. And um, if you have her uh, playing sites aggressively so that um, your hand size is smaller, so you draw cards is a very common play pattern. And uh, she's very nice. Uh, and then um, the last minion I have is the Raytonus Titan. Um, I wanted something that, uh, you know, if a bunch of opposing minions were coming onto my side of the map and somehow my other minions were gonna get overwhelmed by these combat combinations, that I could play this card, it would be a one-sided control effect where opponents' things died, my things didn't, and um, you know, and then I was left with a tool to you know kind of close out the game because like I can't just be defensive; I need something that's also aggressive. So I like this that it's it's a it's a controlling effect um, that can also be turned into an offensive tool. All right, so I talked about most of these spells. Uh, infiltrate. So one of the great things about playing an elementalist, and maybe I'll talk about like I chose elementalist because, as you can see, most of the sites in this deck um, don't produce any threshold. Right, I just have seven earth threshold and thirteen colorless threshold, and so the seven earth threshold is enough to kind of you know reliably get one threshold early. And that lets me play all the double earth thresholds, but otherwise I can just cherry pick the best cards from each other element that only have one specific uh, mana or threshold. So infiltrate probably should have cost two threshold, but it only costs one. Fantastic card, you know, maybe the best like spot removal effect in sorcery. And so you know, get to play two copies, so why not? Um, earthquake, also you know mass removal, until old salt anchorman is being played by lots of other people. Um, you know I get to play earthquake. Uh, even if an opponent has old salt anchorman, earthquake is so good at rearranging the board. Um, it's still useful, 
and um, you know just the the amount of removal it represents is huge, and opponents have to be careful the way that they play, just because it's near deck. So earthquake, love it, um, and then uh, crater eyes. This is a really powerful removal. Um, most damage area spells only hit the surface. This also hits um, the subsurface, so uh, it kills opposing root spiders, which I care a lot about. Um, and uh, it's just you know kind of good at going over the top. It can be a good you know finisher. Um, you know if your opponent you know, kind of overcommits, it's very strong. And because we have Tragedy Worry Ward, we can, um, you know, sometimes make it so that all of our uh, minions are gonna be protected, but opponent's minions aren't. So it's a very common play pattern to move the Tragedy Worry Ward and, and or some other minions <coughs> to leave the opponent with exposure. Okay, um, sideboard. Uh, I wanted some dispels. I have common sense. This is just kind of a catch-all in case someone had a strategy I wasn't expecting. I didn't ever really like them or use them. Uh, geyser, I wanted another geyser. So if I was playing someone who was playing root spiders, I could bring in the third one. Uh, Vampires is, once again, one of the better air cards. Very good for playing against decks that care about life totals. Um, and unlike a straight healing spell, um, they can provide life over and over, and they're still useful if you're at death's door. And because I have all this protection, like Old Soul Anchorman, Shield Maidens, Tragedy War Reward, it's very hard for opponents to remove them, so they're very likely to do the job of getting me some life. Uh, Incinerate, I just kind of wanted it because I have a bunch of common senses, and if someone knew that I have this area effect damage thing that I can tutor, they might play more carefully. Um, I'm not sure that I ever wanted to sideboard it in. Uh, Hydra. So uh, there's a lot of decks that play five power units, and um, I wanted the Hydra as something that's just a little bit bigger. Um, that will be hard for those kinds of decks to deal with. Um, so I, I think this card is probably like very good against Avatars of Earth, um, but also challenging for like decks that go really big and play um, a lot of like fireball type spells. Um, right, and then uh, King of the Realm. I, uh, I I thought maybe if I need to be aggressive, this would be like a good buff for all of my mortals. Um, if someone was playing like Infiltrate, and I need to play some like very long controlling game, I could use it to like get a Queen of Midland back. Um, I also thought there might be some decks that used um, a lot of uh, border militia, and King of the Realm could be a way of, you know, kind of turning all the border militia around to my side. Um, yeah, so uh, that's this deck, and I'm going to make a second video where I talk about iterating on this deck. But if you have any questions about this, uh, this is what I use to attack the metagame. And uh, it, yeah, it performs well. Uh, it ultimately, I lost, um, lost to someone having uh, an infiltrate and a gigantism. So that you know, their old the stolen old old salt anchorman could attack through all the damage prevention that the shield maidens had, and I didn't have my root spider in the right place. Um, the deck is pretty good. Um, I think that with this deck existing, I'm seeing people change their removal suites. I've seen a lot more people play like disintegrate, 
iron shackles. Um, what are some other unconditional removal? Um, anyway, uh, you know, I think that uh, Jackson had a very interesting air aggro deck with a bunch of rolling boulders, which are kind of a nightmare for this deck. And like uh, the Javelin of Destiny, Spear of Destiny. So, um, you know, I think that this, this deck was very good for the moment that I built it. Um, and I think a lot of the principles here are useful in other decks. Um, but I think that if people aren't just leaning on Earthquake um, and Barry, um, but kind of branch out more in the kinds of removal they're using, uh, you know, this deck will be less good over time. Uh, which is great. Like, you know, its purpose was kind of to like spur the metagame forward. All right, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up in the comments or in Discord. If you like this content, like or subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks.